Melissa Russell. I'm the Marketing Programs Manager, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. Today I'm joined with Tracy Crow, our Director of Product Marketing, and John Bailey, our Director of Field Engineering, and just wanted to go over a few housekeeping items before we begin. Everybody is in a listen-only mode. If you do have questions, please feel free to enter them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We will address the questions at the end of the webinar. If for some reason we do not get to your questions before the end of the webinar, we will do our very best to follow up with you shortly thereafter. We are also recording this webinar and we'll make available the webinar as well as a copy of the slides at the end of the presentation. So at this time I'd like to go ahead and hand it over to Tracy. Hello everyone. Um, thank you very much, Melissa. Just to get started, NetMotion is one of the original pioneers in mobile connectivity. The company was founded back in 1999. We've got over 150 employees worldwide. Our headquarters are in Seattle. And in well, supporting those, we have 4,000 customers worldwide that make up a user base of over 1 million users. Next slide. If you look at the different industries that we support, we got our we cut our teeth on public safety because talk, public safety and first responders are two agencies where. Connectivity is absolutely a must. It is life-threatening. It can be you're in life-threatening, life-saving conditions. So you've got to have the connectivity. Followed shortly thereafter by utilities, if you think about disasters. So these are the companies, these are the industries that came to Netmotion, Netmotion first and foremost for what we brought to the table. And then enterprise, and you can see the variety of enterprises that now use our software from transportation to universities. and same goes with healthcare and life sciences, from mobile clinicians to home health care. Next slide. So what's going on in the market today? One of the things we learned was that the growth of mobile and mobile devices, the adoption rate has absolutely gone through the roof. I'm sure each of you are experiencing this with your own organizations. Two of the most astounding facts that I found was that if you pull CIOs and IT professionals, they're saying that mobility is having a similar impact, if not greater, that the Internet had on IT organizations back in the 90s. And then secondarily, looking at the rapid adoption of tablets as either a secondary device or a replacement device for laptops in both consumer and business businesses. Next slide, please. So, What's going on? So when we, about a year ago, we did a survey, or actually I should say Peter Rosavi did a survey, basically asking 400 different organizations, what are their top issues with mobility? Out of that, connectivity was identified as the number one issue, followed by, with that, how do I make it more secure? How do I control the cost? Hey. How do I get visibility and what's going on with those devices? Because the, these devices are connecting over networks I don't own. In fact, yesterday I was uh, speaking at a conference where that was brought up several times in front of the panel of, hey, this is great, we've got mobile devices, but I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what firmware they're running. I have no control over the devices. And then secondarily, and this is what brings us to this uh, webinar, how do I troubleshoot? What kind of tools do I have? I, I'm either using ad hoc tools, I'm using the plethora of tools that I kind of use but don't really work when I have to troubleshoot over mobile networks. I'm relying on a carrier or I'm doing really expensive drive testing. Either way, there's no good simple way of doing troubleshooting for my mobile devices. Next. And so, you know, just to kind of summarize, and this is a more up to this is coming from a special report that Field Technologies magazine did just at the beginning of this year, where just looking at for whether you're looking at handhelds and by that and smartphones and other smart connected devices all the way up through laptops and notebooks, wireless communications is still a top issue. It's still a top concern. You've got other issues like portability, cost, and ruggedness or durability. But again, wireless connect communications or connectivity is right there in the top three. Next. So, and with that, 
they're using that connection, 77% of those mobile workers are using it to get back to the back office in real time. So in other words, they're enhancing their productivity by being able to access back-end resources while they're at the customer site, while they're at a job site. But being able to do that, capture information, troubleshoot, do telematics, do telemedicine is absolutely critical. But yet, 72% are still having trouble with wireless connectivity. Number one being in rural areas. And, and what's, what I find interesting is the number three re area is in metropolitan areas. So it doesn't matter whether you're in the country or in the city. People are still having problems with connectivity. And heck, even inside, sometimes inside a customer site. Next slide. So when dealing with these connectivity issues, how am I troubleshooting the, I can't connect, hey, my application isn't working, it's slow, or I'm getting no bars, the, the network's down. And then the final, most frustrating, I can't do my job with this. And then all of a sudden that device that you're spending thousands of dollars on between connectivity and the device and the applications is sitting in the seat of a car or in a briefcase because it's not usable. Next. So at this point, I want to turn the floor over to John Bailey, who's going to talk to you about how do you troubleshoot mobile devices? How do you troubleshoot more effectively? John, take it away. Thanks, Tracy. So, you know, this kind of comes back to where we started with the webinar. You know, what, what are the key ways to reduce that support time? And again, you know, that slide that Tracy showed, um, how do those problems get reported to you? I mean, typically an end user from their perspective is it's just not, it's just not working, you know, or they think the network is down. You know, so, so some of the four key components to look at, you know, reducing the complexity, complexity for your users. You can't ask your user to have to do a series of troubleshooting tests when they may not be connected to a network and you're doing this completely over the phone. Um, you know, visualizing the components. Do you, do you actually know what you have out there? Tracy mentioned, you know, in, in a speaking event that he went to is, you know, a lot of folks get a lot of devices deployed and they don't know things such as, is, is everybody's firmware up to date? Um, do I know where in those metropolitan areas that there are dark, dark spots, that I know I'm going to have connectivity issues there? Do I actually have a visual way to see that network I don't own? And the key one here, too, is simplifying the isolation of the fault. You know, it, is it, how hard is it to find exactly where the problem is occurring? You know, again, when you think of an IT help desk supporting a mobile workforce or a field workforce, they're really completely blind to what's happening out there in the user's environment. And so how do they troubleshoot those devices in the field? And then, you know, give some enablement to the user themselves. You know, again, if you can reduce the complexity, for the user, um, can you also enable them, you know, giving them some tools where they can troubleshoot them, themselves. So that's what brings us to net motion diagnostics. If you think about any standard remote mobile field worker connection, the, the connection path is generally speaking the same, right? So you've got the device itself, you've got the local network it's connecting to, that could be the carrier network, that could be a home Wi-Fi, that could be a hospital Wi-Fi. It's, it's potentially going over the internet or some other type of cloud, traversing some sort of firewall, connecting into the VPN, and then finally, if it gets all the way to that point, it's actually connecting into the application itself. So for an IT help desk, they have to have the tools or the ability to troubleshoot at each connection point where the problem could be occurring. And that's what brings us to NetMotion Diagnostics. So NetMotion Diagnostics is the ability to essentially push a button and run a series of end-to-end -end tests from the device itself all the way back into the network, including the application server. So by running these series of tests, the user is simply pushing a button, you know, again, shielding the user from the complexity, but we're also enabling the user. We're, we're showing them some visual of, we think the problem is with your local connection. You know, there's, you're at a local Wi-Fi hotspot, you're not getting connected there, or there's, you can't get beyond the internet. Um, or you can actually get all the way in and then you can't actually connect to the application itself. Maybe there's an internal networking problem. Not only do we run these series of tests with the push of a button, but then they're automatically sent up to a console 
that the IT administrator can then go into and see the full results of the test so they can start their troubleshooting. They could even potentially start their troubleshooting before the users reported a problem. You know, a user can just be trained to say, if you run into issues, push this button and know that someone will be working on it. And then that could trigger off a series of events on the back end. So let me show you a bit about what we're talking about. So first off is the, the button itself. You know, what, what does the easy button look like? There, there's a couple of ways this can be done. Um, the one that we we're showing you on the screen is you could right click this icon and just click on Diagnose Network Problems. You know, very simple for a user. You could also pin an icon to the tray. So you could pin this icon that says Run Mobile Diagnostics or pin it to maybe the desktop, you know, and just make it, you know, in a nice location that if you have a problem, click this. Or you could even customize that icon yourself. So you could put maybe something that is unique to the help desk at your environment where they really, you know, it's a, a nice straightforward button for them to push and they know that that's going to run a series of tests. Now, like I, I mentioned, it is going to give some visualization to the user. You know, we do want to enable the user if we can. Um, it, it's going to depend on, on how, you know, the complexity of your users and, and their skill set as well to understand, you know, what the series of tests mean. Um, you know, for example, something like this where we can see that a host name test failed, that may be pretty obvious to a, a sort of a, a somewhat savvy end user, but if we look at something like this test where there was actually packet loss, that may be a little bit more advanced. So, you know, this is a great result to show that while the user, you know, actually can connect to everything, including the application, this is the user probably reporting back to the help desk that the application is slow or they're having quote unquote problems with the application. But again, what's actually happening is one of the tests we're running is validating the connectivity across the internet and also validating, you know, if there's any packet loss in transit. Now also, as I mentioned, those same test results are then automatically sent up to a diagnostics console where the administrator can then go view the results of those tests. Not only can they go in and view the results of the test, but they also can get alerted when someone has, you know, quote unquote, pushed the easy button. So you could, you could configure it so maybe there's, you know, a workflow on the back end. If someone has pushed this button because they had a problem, and the results are sent and a test failed, I need to alert the help desk. And maybe that's an alert of an email that goes to an, you know, an email address that then opens up a ticket in, in your ticketing system, or maybe it's a text to a, a series of phone numbers that are folks on call, for example. Now, in looking at these tests, you know, if I just click on the first one again, this is the administrator now that would be looking at this, and I'm just going to click on all tests. When you think about, you know, what I talked about the connection touch points of the traffic, you know, from an end user all the way back into the application itself, it really is a, a series of, of locations where the problem could reside. And the ways we are testing this is we're actually doing a pretty complex series of tests. We're not just validating, for example, that the interface has an IP address. Um, if I click in here, you can see we're actually looking at a lot of information about that, that um, adapter. We're looking at any kind of Wi-Fi that we see is available. If it's a cellular connection, we'll actually look at the connectivity strength of that. We're looking at a series of tests at each location point. So we're, we're doing a, a pretty strong test to really help the administrator pinpoint where the problem is. The other test that we do in terms of internet connectivity as I mentioned, we're actually testing, you know, if there's latency, we're testing if there's packet loss. And we're doing that to a set of servers that we host in the cloud. So this way we know that these servers are, are up and running. You know, we're hosting them. And that, that's not, that, that we can make sure that they've got 100% uptime. So there's not some, you know, look, can you go to google.com kind of test. We're actually doing a series of tests to get against them including even loading a page off that server and validating that the page actually loads. So we're doing, you know, again, more than just a can I resolve this name, we're actually getting down into the details of can I actually pull content. You know, maybe the network is so saturated that I can actually get to the site, but I can't pull down any content because, you know, it's been saturated. Now, also I mentioned 
you could do a, a custom test. So if I click here and look at these custom tests, this gives you the ability then to create tests to the internal network. So again, if you think about what if the, the user can connect all the way into, say, say your, your VPN, and then the problem is getting from there <clears throat> to the application itself. This is where you could create a series of tests to maybe let's look at the next hop, let's ping the next hop, let's trace route to the, the subnet where the servers re reside. Or maybe you know our main application is a web-based application. Let me actually pull down content from that application. You know, is is the web server up? Is that application up? And can I actually pull down content? We can also do things like a TCP connect. So this is a great test to connect. You know, is your server actually you know the application server itself actually running and listening for traffic? So let's say it's SAP. This is where I could create my own series of tests to validate that SAP is up, for example. So again, you know, with mobile diagnostics, we are really focused on doing a, a series of tests. We're focused on making it easy for the end user. Um, again, going back to sort of those four rules, you know, it's, it's simplifying, it's shielding the user from having to troubleshoot, and it's pinpointing the problem, you know, again, and then giving you visibility into troubleshooting the problem. So again, thank you everybody for your time. I think uh, Melissa, you're, I'm going to turn it over to you for a little Q&A. Thanks, John. At this time, if you do have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the Q&A box. And let's see here. It looks like um, I can take this first one. So this is a great question. So uh, uh, the question came up, you know, if the user doesn't have connectivity, then how does the, the console actually you know, get the results of the test? Great question. So again, there's a couple of things that we do. We do give some visibility to the end user themselves. So we give them some tools into troubleshooting you know, where the problem might be for them. But we also will send it as soon as we do have connectivity. So the message there can sort of be to the user, you know, if the issue is you don't have, you know, here's the results of your test, if it's that it can't get beyond the internet, then you need to you know go to a location where that test will automatically be sent, or you can email it you know th this file to a help desk alias, and that's where we can get the results. Okay, we had another question that came in. It looks like uh, your diagnostics application works great with NetMotion Mobility, but does it work with any other application? John, do you want to take this one, or shall I? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, okay. That's also a great question. You know, if if you're using our mobility agent, there are some built-in functionalities around pushing the button automatically. Sorry, I <laughs> have a cough there. Um, but it will work with any VPN. It'll even work if it, if there's no VPN involved at all. So again, it's it sort of doesn't care about the the connection itself. It's going to still test the entire pathway. Um, if you have the NetMotion Mobility VPN, there's a few enhanced things you can do, such as you could potentially have the test run automatically. So with using our product, Mobility, if we see the connection go dark, dark we could fire off a test automatically so a user doesn't have to. But again, it, it will work with any mobile VPN. Thanks, John. Another question that came in was, so when a, when a problem happens, can I tell where the problem happened? Is there any way to map out where the error occurred? And I'll take this one. Yes, there is a screen within the Diagnostics Management Console that when you bring up the error report, it will show where the error actually occurred. So thank you for that question. Looks like another question might have come in. Um, actually, two questions. So, so Tracy, maybe I'll, I'll let you take um, the one, um, Mr. Sparks. We can reach out to you directly. Um, there is a question here in regards to cost and any cost info we can share. Uh, Tracy, do you want to take that one? Okay. The cost for the diagnostics module um, basically goes anywhere from thirty dollars per device on up, depending on whether you want to 
on-premise installation or whether you're looking for a cloud installation. Cloud installations uh, typically run about three, starting at $3.25 per device per month with an annual contract on up. So we offer a lot of different options for how, do you, how you want to deploy diagnostics so that it best meets your needs. Yeah, and one, one great point that Tracy made there to make sure everyone got that is the console itself is actually hosted in the cloud. So the nice part about that is, you know, it's really just an agent that's deployed, and, and there's many ways you can deploy the agent, you know, automatically. But the console is basically hosted in the cloud, so, so you don't have to go provision a server, put it on your network, you know, learn how to set all that stuff up. We basically just give you a login to, to the console itself. And just to add to that, I'll also remind everyone that if you go up to our website, we do offer a free trial of the software, which is a great way for you to get exposure to the software without a financial commitment. Great. Well, at this time, it looks like we have concluded all the Q&A. I'd like to thank everybody again for taking the time out of their day to join us. And like I said earlier, we have recorded this webinar and have the slides, and we will distribute them as soon as we get them posted to the website. John and Tracy, I'd like to thank you again for joining us, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.